Madam President, the reason why this debate took so long and the reason why this debate was at times intense is because we represent the entire state of Connecticut. And 40% of that state is represented by sitting senators in this circle. Yet with this debate, which is the only time that this Republican minority party had the right to speak about this budget at a meeting, was here. We were locked out of the room. We were told we didn't have to be there. Now, that isn't just recent news. We started in October. And there's jokes about it at the back of the envelope, but to us, it wasn't a joke. It was about doing something right in this state. It's about having all ideas shared in this state. It's about bringing people together to make a difference in this state. That's what it was about. So we did put out a budget, and we're proud of that budget. A no tax increase budget, which put all the social services back on the table to a variety of degree to protect those less vulnerable. And when we did that, we had it reviewed by OFA because we had ideas. We had a plan, and we brought it forward. Not once do we get a call to come to a meeting. Not once do we get a call for the governor to invite us to say, let's sit down and explore some of the concepts. We did a transportation budget that still today no one has claimed there's an issue other than we don't like it. That's not open-minded. That's not bringing everybody at the table. That's not the saying when he first took office, there are no Republican ideas or Democrat ideas. They're just good ideas and bad ideas. That's what we're talking about. And we are frustrated. And we should be frustrated. That's not the process we signed up for. We get a budget Saturday morning. I can't even remember because our clocks are all off. And we're here, and the House is here 24 hours. They're going on 40 hours with three hours rest. People would say that is ridiculous and absurd. I would too. Is that what we're doing in this institution? You stay here till you vote my way or go home. That's what this place is about? 14 years ago, that isn't what I signed up for. I want a place we have fair debate. I want to have a place where we have a discussion. I want to have a place where all ideas are brought into a room and everybody gets a seat at the table. You can disagree with me. I have no problem with that. You don't want to listen to me. I've got a problem with that. I represent constituents, just like all of you. That's the problem with this budget. That's the problem with the transportation plan. And to suggest that this budget sets us on a brighter future for tomorrow? Well, at the end of two years, we got a $1.6 billion hole that we're all falling into. How does that change structuring? How does it change who we are and what we do? How is that looking at things different? It's not. It's the same all. If you're not going to talk about the structure that gets us to our problem, and all you're going to do is raise taxes and not look inward, you can never solve the problem. And we should learn that after fiscal deficits, after fiscal deficits, after fiscal deficits, and then we pass a plan that gives us another fiscal deficit. It is insane. But even if we disagree not having us in a room to talk about it. Sometimes one may argue that you don't have people in the room because they scare you, because perhaps they have ideas which are different than yours, and that may scare you. I hope that's not the case. We work on, what, 92% of the bills pass here, either in this chamber, either unanimously or with a majority of us voting for them and a couple who don't. But why does that happen? Because we start off with joint committees that work together on a budget. We work right on through to the day it hits the desk. 
but not the budget. Scatter. Go into separate rooms. We knock, not a lot. So we end up with a lopsided, one-sided document for which many people in the state of Connecticut, press and otherwise, point to us and say, what are you doing? I can't answer that question. So yes, we're frustrated. Yes, we're upset. Yes, we feel like we should be at the table. And yes, we feel that we need to do it right, not just do it. And yet we have said time and time again, please don't give us a budget five hours before we vote. Give us a fair opportunity. And we don't get it. And then we're asked to come here to vote. And then we're squeezed by a clock that says 12, you're done. And all legislation that sits here has to suffer under a guillotine of 12 o'clock because we have to be shorter on the debate so bills don't die. Why? What is it to put this budget into special session along with the implementers that are growing at astronomical rate in terms of, of height, probably higher than his desk? And we have to review that. And everybody knows in this circle, everybody knows in this circle, in that implementer are bills that died, Bills that weren't heard, bills that didn't make it through, bills with the public don't even know about it, had no right to weigh in, are going to be in that bill. And we all know it. And we're going to do nothing about it, but we all know it. We've got to change. We've got to set a new course for this state. We've got to be responsible here in this chamber first. We've got to stop passing legislation that doesn't make it through the committees. We've got to stop passing legislation that people don't get to vote on. We've got to stop passing legislation the public doesn't know about by sticking to implementers, and we all go home, and someone says, boy, that was a dumb bill you passed. We say, I was in the implementer. I couldn't take it out because it's part of a whole package. That's what we say. We all know it. When are we going to change? When are we going to change? Senate Republicans started the change by saying, we're going to talk about cities. Because the health of our city is the health of the state. We said we want to open up our voices. We want to bring everybody in. Let's talk about a new way of looking. And we did that well. But that shows you we can't have the conversation. That shows you we have commonality. And that shows you when we get serious, this body, this, this room can get it done. But if we do it the way we do in the past, we're doomed for failure. And this budget has a $1.6 billion failure. I believe in property tax reform, but when you're giving the money to government, be it all town halls or COGS, you're not giving it to the community. Politicians can't tell you what's best in the community. Only community leaders can. So when you say, I'm going to give it to the town hall or I'm going to give it to COG, and they will tell you where to put it, I would suggest that dollar is better in the hands of a community leader than it is in the hands of politicians who are going to be given money to find efficiencies is that that's not an oxymoron. I've never heard one. You're going to give more money to government to find efficiencies. That never happens. Give it to the communities directly. Bypass all this government stuff and bureaucracy. They know what to do. They know how to do it. So, Madam President, we're running against the clock, so I will keep it short. This is why we are where we are. This is why this debate took so long. It is a culmination of frustration. It's a culmination of the inability of our ideas to reach the public. And this is the forum for which we, we speak and seek. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator Lee. Mark.